Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Welcome to I Am Brilliant, where we explore secrets to unlock potentials. The goal of this show is that we basically want to dive into the minds, insights, and the ingredients of success of I Am's very own high achievers, be it in the fields of education, intellectual, and academic. But most importantly, our guests here at I Am Brilliant must have contributed significantly to the development of our society through their works. So this week, we have a very special guest and he's a very wonderful friend of mine, but I would not call him a friend because he's like rather a teacher to all of us at our Kuria. Yeah, and he's a fourth year student of Usuluddin and Comparative Religion, currently also studying at the same Kuria as mine. In 2016, he has published a book, which is a translation of an Arabic poem on Islamic theology. And in recent years, he had been invited by the government of Japan to present and deliver a lecture on the history of Islam in Southeast Asia. Besides that, he was also invited to present an academic paper at Marmara University of Istanbul on the history or on history and Islamic education. And also just very recently, he had been making one very great achievement that he wrote an essay on the an essay on science and spirituality <coughs> in a competition held by Nanyang Technology University of Singapore and he made it into the finals. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our guest for this first episode, Brother Muhammad Yusra Ahmad Hulayi, to our guest, to our show. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you so much for uh, joining us, Yusra. Yes. Basically, I remember when I first became your group mate. <laughs> And we were having this assignment on transcendent unity of religion, uh -huh. your favorite topic. Uh, yes. And <laughs> you kept on sharing with us topics and articles that you wrote on your blog. Mm -hmm. I think that was my first time encountering your blog. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't help but go through all the articles that you've written. And honestly, honestly, my first impression is that I don't feel like this is a student sitting in the classroom the same as I am. And you have this wonderful tagline on your blog saying, true knowledge is that which ornaments the soul. Yes, indeed. What does true knowledge mean to you exactly? Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, Firstly, thank you for inviting me to Our this honor, yeah. program. Mm, secondly, I would like to apologize for, yeah, we philosophers uh, actually are notorious for being bad speakers, actually. <laughs> so if I stutter, uh, I do that sometimes. Yeah, so okay. Same. <laughs> uh, um, so I'm not actually the paragon of reading much less knowledge, mm -hmm. but it is uh, it is an honor uh, to invite me here. Um, so the question is, what is true knowledge? Yeah. Well, the answer is in the tagline itself. <laughs> true knowledge is that which ornaments the soul. So okay. yeah, so that's the short answer. But if we are to uh, state a long answer mm -hmm. uh, we need to ask first not what is true knowledge yeah. but why knowledge mm -hmm. uh, so why do uh, we seek knowledge of course we have many different answers yeah. some of them are maradatillah some of them uh, to find what is beneficial for us yeah. but ultimately all of this leads to what uh, in uh, one of our Muslim philosophers yeah. He answered this question, what is the ultimate purpose of seeking knowledge is happiness. Uh, why happiness? First, we must define what is happiness. How to define happiness? We define the opposite of it, okay. which is misery. Okay. So there are many forms of misery. Uh, poverty, yeah. hunger. But ultimately, even if we have all of the blessings of this world, yeah. uh, we would be left with still one uh, form of misery, the okay. ultimate form of misery, which is doubt. Doubt about uh, the mo the biggest questions uh, of our existence. I did not see that coming. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> doubt. Where, who are we? Mm. Uh, where did we come from? Yeah. Where will we go? Why are we here? Yeah. So all of uh, these questions uh, demand answers. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, failure to answer all of these questions yeah. will lead uh, to, of course, anxiety 
essentialism, the philosophy of so called. Uh, and I think uh, failure to answer all of these questions also can lead to uh, what we call clinical depression. Yeah. So uh, uh, this is so if uh, we had defined uh, misery, yes. so what is happiness? Yes. It is of course the opposite of doubt, yeah. which is certainty. Mm -hmm. Therefore, Islam talks about yaqeen, yes. al mulyaqeen, ainul yaqeen, and haqul yaqeen. So uh, certainty in its highest form, uh, it transforms our soul. Uh, it lets us uh, know about God, mm -hmm. about ourselves, about everything as how they truly are. Certain knowledge. Yes, yeah, certain knowledge. So all of this knowledge uh, will lead to certainty and certainty will lead uh, to the tranquility of the soul. So it transforms the soul. So that is what I mean by True knowledge is that which ornaments the soul, and that transformation is not only uh, to the soul, but of, but also to the body. Uh, so, what is the what what are the ma manifestations of the transformation? Yeah. These are which what we call akhla, uh, akhla. So, akhla is not uh, only the perfection of uh, behaviors, mm -hmm. attitudes, and manners, yeah. but it is also the whole transformation of the being of man himself. So it occurs on the ontological level. So you see, this is what I afraid. I'm afraid of. I'm starting to spouting. It's fine because terms. I think when we talk, because you began the uh, answering the question, and I did not see it coming that you say about doubt. Uh -huh. And then we, when we talk about happiness, usually people will think about something that is of pleasure. Yes. And but here, happiness is. It has something to do with how we make sense of a the world. Yes. Yeah? Our relation with yes. God as well. Yes, because uh, if we try to uh, imagine, mm -hmm. if we have, if uh, had we possess all of uh, the things in this world, yeah. we would still uh, left uh, to these answers, uh, to these questions. So, fail of course, just like I said before, failure to answer these questions will lead to uh, doubt and consequently misery. So that is what uh, mm -hmm. knowledge is for. Uh, so uh, if we uh, trace regress back to uh, the previous answers given by different people, Marubatillah and so on and so forth, yeah. what's the purpose of Marubatillah? Of course, happiness. We want to be happy. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to be liked by our God. Yeah. Uh, and uh, what's the purpose of uh, beneficial knowledge? Of course, happiness again. Uh, so that is the purpose of knowledge and true knowledge is that which can bring uh, us happiness uh, that's all so meaning because when we come to IAM and everyone when we are asked what are you doing I'm studying here studying what knowledge mm -hmm. and things like that so you're saying that we have to ask ourselves if this knowledge make our akhlaq better mm -hmm. and sort of when we have a certainty about our existence in life yes we have this peace of mind and calmness in our heart yes so that is how the happiness manifests as well so if i could put if i could uh make a very short answer for what is true knowledge yeah true knowledge is that which is meaningful to us definitely uh, yes it's the one that is meaningful to us so ladies and gentlemen that's a deep conversation do join us after this commercial break
welcome back to I Am Brilliant. Just now we've been diving into the meaning of true knowledge, how it, it, it is related to the meaning of life and happiness. And in such a short period of time, you could cramp it all into such a precise yeah. manner. It's all an ilham from Allah. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. And, but I know one thing, I know one thing for sure that things like this, it's not, it doesn't happen here. Yes. It must be because due to your practice previously. Mm. It, it took a it, at least it took time. Yeah, okay. Right. So, not only that you are able <coughs> to speak very intellectually, but not only also on your blog, but those who are following your social media, even your WhatsApp stories, you sometimes you talk very philosophically. So, how did your intellectual journey start seriously for you? Um, actually, it, it all started with that doubt that I mentioned before. Uh, it started uh, around six years ago when I was in Darul Quran. Okay. There we had uh, many discussions, mm -hmm. and all of these discussions uh, were not uh, held by uh, lecturers or administratives, but the students, okay. and they held it uh, not officially. Yeah. So uh, when I participated in all of these discussions, yes. uh, it seemed to me that all of these people were throwing terminologies. Uh, sp spitting out ideas and so on and so forth. So I thought to myself that uh, where did all of these people learn from? What did they read? Mm -hmm. How did they know so much? And why did I know nothing? So in yeah. that helplessness, in that existential yeah. <laughs> uh, angst, uh, uh, I think I can call it an enlightenment. I all got right. enlightened. So <laughs> I got enlightened. So at that moment, I uh, I say to I say to myself, uh, this cannot be. Mm -hmm. uh, I had I have to change myself. Okay. So with that determination, Faiza Azam Sah Fatalkan Allah, so I took a book. I took whatever book that I can uh, had have my hands on, and I read it. Mm -hmm. uh, there was w that one book uh, when I read it pages after pages but that one page I stumbled upon that page and I stuck All right. I was stuck for five hours I was reading that page again and again and again and again until I got it right until I got what the page really wants uh, wants to say so uh, after reading that page mm -hmm. I got a fever <laughs> I got a fever literally a fever Brings yeah so uh, but uh, when you have that kind of determination, yeah. you have that kind of uh, consciousness, it brings out the, that kind of determination. And that determination uh, drives the effort. Uh, so... Uh, is it a philosophical book? Yes, it, it is a philosophical book. It, uh, it is entitled mm -hmm. Falsafatuna by Imam Bakir al-Sadr. Bakir al-Sadr. In Arabic. Uh, in Arabic, both in Arabic and in English, okay. uh, because at that time my Arabic was not very strong. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, that that what brought me here. I, I see. So usually when we are compelled to do something, somehow there must be some factor of our environment, right? Uh huh. So who exactly inspired you to do that? For example, you say you listen to these friends, or let's say classmates uh -huh. talking very intellectually mm -hmm. as well but perhaps are there any other people besides them who inspired you do you mean scholars or yeah it could be scholars ah. someone because that one time you want to start but in the long run as well who inspired you mm, i remember uh, that one moment when i was again in darul quran yeah. i visited a friend in his room there his bed uh, his mattress was not on his bed. It was on the floor. Okay. And then on his bed, I, uh, were lying kitab, uh, okay. books of all sorts. Yeah. And in his wardrobe, mm. also books. Then on his table, on the shelves, everywhere. All of them were books. And I asked him, where are your shirts? Uh, in, his <laughs> in his luggage. Okay. <laughs> that one small luggage that he brought uh, from his hometown. So that inspired me a lot. Uh, and he and he 
me with your friend. Mm -hmm. But in terms of scholars, uh, uh, through the time that I read uh, many books, all of them were too hard for me, mm -hmm. were too difficult for me. And I find that my s um, I find that um, I was demotivated. I was demotivated. And then I found a book, yeah. Risalah Kaum Muslimin by Tan Sri Professor Syed Muhammad Nakir Rata. Mm -hmm. And that book uh, elevated me uh, a level higher. So that book gave me a new capacity, a new ability to read other books. Because, you know, there are books uh, that serve as a pigeonhole or a door okay. to other uh, to other great books. Mm -hmm. So I had uh, Said Muhammad Nakib al mm -hmm. and then I found another book yes. by Toshihiko Izutsu. And then I found another book by, of course, you know, Sri Joshua, and then by uh, Said Hussein Nas. So all of these four people, scholars, uh, they yeah. are the ones who inspired me and kept me going. How about anyone in IAM, perhaps? In IAM? Yeah. I believe you, you look up to somebody or it could be a lecturer, it could be also a fellow friend. Yes, I had one friend. Mm -hmm. uh, he was in economics. Uh, he he used to be my uh, undeclared rival. We did not declare ourselves as rival, but I would want to guess that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. We, yeah but we both know. We even both though the kulias are different. Even though the kulias are different, but we both knew that we were rivals even from Darul Quran. Rival <laughs> as in what? Rivals and uh, uh, as in uh, knowledge. As in knowledge, when you have a friend that would compete with you mm -hmm. uh, in goodness, uh, you have a very great blessing. Yeah. A friend who would compete with you in pursuing knowledge, for example. Yes. Okay. For example. He reads uh, philosophy uh, as well? Yes, of oh course. Right. But of course, his kind of philosophy is economical philosophy. I see. Uh, what I read is pure philosophy. Mm. Mm. But, but rivalry is rivalry. <laughs> You say he is your rival, but do you spend a lot of time with him? I mean, like ironically. Uh, at that time, I was alone, and he, he had his girlfriend. Okay. Uh, she is married, and I'm also married. So at that time, we did uh, we did not spend uh, time together a lot. But wh but when we spend our time together, uh, we took a very long time, mm. and we would discuss uh, what we have read. Uh, and we discuss everything until midnight, sometimes until morning. Uh, so you choose particularly him to as a benchmark? Uh, not really as a benchmark. I had higher benchmarks, <laughs> but That's but of course, important. but of course, you need someone to uh, measure yourself. Yeah. Uh, uh, am I getting closer to uh, what I put to myself to the standards that I put on myself? Or whether he had got this. Now we're getting to friendship and rivalry. Ah yes. So it was. Uh, it is a very sweet friendship. So uh, now you're still keeping in touch with him. Uh sometimes I reply to his WhatsApp story. He replies to my WhatsApp story. Because he's like the very first people who make you have that sense of competitiveness. Uh, yes. Yes. Because uh, we were both. I uh, had the same dilemma. Definitely. Uh, so we'll come back after this and go into the topic still. still. So, <laughs> so you want to guess?
welcome back to IAM Brilliance and thank you so much for staying and joining us. Just now we were talking about rivalry and friendship, having that sense of competitiveness, the importance of basically having a company yes. when you want to pursue something that is meaningful, yes. right? And that is also one of the tips to build our discipline, I believe. Would you agree with that? Yes, of course. To have good group of friends around us. Yes. But how do you, I know like we are all, like you said, mm -hmm. you feel helpless before this, mm -hmm. meaning we all start at zero. Mm -hmm. And how do you grow the discipline? And it's not just the discipline, you're very passionate about it. Mm -hmm. So how do you grow the discipline, be it in seeking knowledge and having the perseverance to read something that sparks, that it grows into passion? Yes, uh, it did not start with passion. Mm -hmm. As I said before, it started with the feeling of helplessness. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that I think that is the one thing that drives me until now. Yeah, the feeling that I, I know nothing. Yeah, uh, I I literally know nothing. But uh, I guess that is a very negative uh, motivator. <laughs> so uh, that uh, feeling of helplessness actually yes. translate or transmutes into consciousness. I think that is. Consciousness or awareness. I think that is the one thing uh, that is the most, uh, that is the strongest uh, motivator. I think that we can have. Whenever s anyone uh, asks me mm -hmm. uh, how to grow love for reading, they will not expect answers like start with an easy book first. Yeah. Uh, they will not expect uh, surround yourself with good friends who love reading also. But they will <laughs> find my answers. Um, quite radical okay. because uh, I always uh, have these two things awareness Awareness. and willingness mm -hmm. uh, when you when you have uh, awareness mm -hmm. automatically the willingness will come so when you are aware of a certain situation when you are aware that you are in a helpless condition you will automatically uh, apa tu you will automatically uh, push yourself further. So, uh, but then people will say that I have an awareness, I have awareness, but I simply like don't have, our ignorance. yes, okay. but I simply don't have the energy, yeah. the, the inertia, the momentum. Tell me about it. Yeah, so uh, my answer is simple. Mm -hmm. If you do not have enough uh, willingness, it means it only means that you don't have enough awareness. Y you are not aware enough of your own ignorance. You are not aware of how grave uh, you are mm -hmm. in such a condition. So that is the thing. That is the only thing that drives me. It is awareness. Meaning there's awareness first. And then it's either we're making a choice whether we are interested or committed to the pursuit. Yes. So, uh, so at that time, I was very vigorous. I was mm -hmm. very vigorous because of the awareness that I had. But uh, it must be very intense. Right? Yes, it was very intense. I used to read books uh, close to eight hours a day. But you read walking. Yes, while walking. Okay. And <laughs> at one time, I uh, what was it? Jatuh jenah dekat. Yeah, I fell okay. down the stairs because I I trip on a ban apa banana. <laughs> Okay. It was very cartoonic, but it was real. Um, so yeah, that that's it. You that's just it. At the beginning. Yes, and then um, that uh, awareness translates into passion. Mm -hmm. But I guess awareness is much stronger than passion. Passion fades over time, uh, unless you have a motivator. But then awareness, awareness, aka uh, enlightenment. When you are enlightened about your own ignorance, yeah. you uh, there's nothing changeable about that. There's nothing changeable about your awareness. But when you have passion, passion changes. Yeah, passion changes. Uh, it depends on situations. How do you make the willingness more materialized? I mean, tangible. For example, do you time yourself every day how many hours you must read or how many pages you must finish in a day? Anything like that? No, I simp I, I don't put any standards or benchmark. Mm -hmm. 
how how many pages do I have to read a day? Uh, at at any intervals that I have in my days, yeah. I will open my book. Uh, I will simply open my book. I will find a place alone, and then I will read. How do you combat distractions? For example, for me, my distraction, biggest distraction, is my smartphone. Mm-hmm. As a social media, I can handle it, but YouTube, I cannot. <laughs> So it's easier for me to watch YouTube than to read, for example. What is your tips on that, for example? Uh, I was very fortunate that my smartphone is uh, <laughs> my smartphone is not really that smart. Okay. And <laughs> so, uh, so I don't have many apps to play with. Okay. Uh, and then, um, so I only have my books to entertain me. Uh, my friends uh, used to they they keep on uh, asking me to go out with them yeah. but I simply don't have any money <laughs> so uh, all that I have are books it's a blessing uh, it's a blessing in disguise yes uh, so so uh, that's how I manage uh, my readings every day and if for example you said just now start with an easy book uh-huh. does it mean something that we enjoy first for example fictional or um Let's say someone wants to dive into uh-huh. philosophy, uh-huh. so go for an easy book. Uh, no, I would not recommend that. Okay, <laughs> because I started with the most difficult book first. Uh, actually, I started with any books that I can mm-hmm. have my hands on. But uh, if I could turn back t- uh, time, I would start with the most difficult book first. We must have yes, yourself. yes. We must have the courage to venture into the unknown. Mm. We must have the courage to read. Uh, Difficult books because difficult books are great books. Yeah. Books are written by uh, wise people, by people who are close to perhaps the prophets themselves. Yeah. So people like Aristotle and our own Muslim philosophers, Al Ghazali, and so on and so forth. We must be brave. What would you do if you feel fr- frustrated? Just like you said, you spend five hours mm-hmm. to understand a certain paragraph that you felt sick. How do you not let that frustration stop you? Uh, again, I was unfortunate that I uh, stumbled upon one book, mm-hmm. uh, How to Read a Book by Mortimer Adler. Oh. So when uh, when I had difficulties reading dif- uh, difficult books, yeah. I always go back to that book on how to read this book. Yeah. But when there are no relevant manuals in that book, yeah. I would go to the I would go to the scholars themselves. The Quran has told us. Uh, if you do not know, then ask those who know. Uh, True. So I ask those who know. For example, for example, my lecturers, and sometimes even my friends who are in, uh, who are PhD graduates, and many of them are more knowledgeable. Than so they me. would guide you through how to overcome a book. Yes. Yes. One who has read the, that book, for example. Yes. Or perhaps one who has not yet read the book. But uh, maybe he heard something about that book. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, again, you and must... And like an introduction to that book would make it easier to understand the uh, basic idea of that Yes, book. yes. Sometimes uh, people write about that book. So Reviews. Yes. And sometimes you people write books about that book. So yeah, 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 true. So, uh, you need to be diligent. You need to be... Uh, like you said, to find that door that will bring you yes. to the very sea of knowledge. Yes, of course. That's very interesting. So we'll come back after the commercial break.
welcome back to I Am Brilliance, where we explore secrets to unlock potentials. So, so far, I've been enjoying this conversation. And I'm not saying that that's all that matters to me, but I believe that everyone is following it because we've been getting comments. So thank you for joining us and thank you for tuning in. A lot of times when we go to I Am Online, mm. we see that many people are good advisors. They know how to give advice to everyone. <laughs> And it seems like they have so much time. I believe if we use that time to read books, we would yes. have some early stuff that we're just doing. Yes. But when it comes to looking back in our life, for you personally, Yusra, mm. what are the three advice that you would tell your younger self? Mm. Perhaps in the realm of your intellectual journey. Mm -hmm. mm. My first advice to my younger self, mm -hmm. in fact, to myself right now, is know thyself. Know yourself. Thyself. Know yourself. Yeah. But perhaps uh, this kind of advice is not relevant for for a younger me. Okay. So perhaps I need to render the advice. Attempt to know yourself. Even even though you do not know how to know yourself, but attempt to know yourself. Ask yourself serious questions about yourself to yourself. Because that kind of questions, only those kind of questions can uh, can shake you, shake your consciousness and bring you to another level of consciousness yeah. because that will make you adult. So you need to ask yourself serious questions about yourself. For example? Who am I? Why am I here? Where did I come from? Where did, uh, why, did, why did I come here? Yeah. Why am I here? Where will I go? What's the purpose of my existence? So you need to ask all of that. But first, ask yourself this starting question. Who am I? So, uh, because man arafa nafsahu fakat arafa rabbahu. Whoever knows himself knows his lot. That's true. So, uh, that is the first advice. The second advice is be gentle, be a halim, a halim. A halim is uh, one who has power, mm -hmm. one who has the capacity, the ability to do harm to people who do he to do him harm, but he does not do so because he knows that with his power, if he retaliates, yeah. uh, the people who do him harm yes. uh, will utterly dis be destroyed. So be a, gent uh, be a gentle person, be a halim. Because with, 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 with that kind of uh, personality, people will not be wild away from you. People will come close to you, both uh, common people and uh, also uh, pious people, wali, ulama and so on and so forth and then uh, my third advice is be uh, be at the service of a scholar of an ulama serve a scholar yes serve a scholar bring him dr uh, bring him uh, drinks mm -hmm. uh, give him presents yes. uh, arrange his classes and bring his uh, staffs is it to uh, take his uh, heart or Yes, but also to gain barakah from him. Okay. And also, logically, nothing begets a perfect thing yeah. unless, uh, except a perfect thing. Mm -hmm. So nothing begets knowledge except knowledgeable persons, yeah. which is ulama. Yeah. So surround yourself with ulama uh, and be at the service of ulama. So the first one is to know ourselves. Know yourselves. By asking questions that would make us uncomfortable, yes. but bring us to the a better position yes to look at life yes that's the first one yes and the second one is to be gentle yes be, be gentle be being gentle to ourselves as being well gentle to you no do not be gentle <laughs> to yourself. rage rage don't go gentle into the that's a power <laughs> <of> <laughs> yeah yeah so don't be gentle on yourself be hard on yourself okay uh, but be gentle with others all right uh, and then especially the ones who have harmed her, us and we have the perfect capability to harm them back yes especially to, to forgive does it mean yes, forgive, especially yeah. to, of course, your family members. In my case, of course, my wife. <laughs> and then, uh, yes, then, then the third advice is surround yourself with scholars. To surround yourself with scholars. With true scholars. When you ask about who am I and why am I here, I understand that we are asking why am I created in the first place, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Oh, uh, do you mean we should also ask why am I studying in IUM? And As a start, that? that can be a good question too. Uh, why in IIM, why not other places? True. Who are the scholars that you would want to serve, or you have served and you 
are thankful that you have served them? Because you mentioned about serving scholars. Ah uh, yes. Uh, the closest and the de- dearest to me is Dr. Megawati. Alright. Oh, from I uh, from RK from Usuludin. Yeah. Uh, is that is the one thing that is unfortunate for me is that I do not have I did not have the opportunity much opportunity to serve scholars. Uh, but of course, if I uh, am given the opportunity, I would like to do that. I am very much love to do that. Is it because when we serve somebody, we get to spend time with them and yes. ask personal questions? Yes, we get to ask personal questions, and also we get to ask very detailed questions about knowledge. How would you want to use your knowledge for the society? For example, now I know that you're also teaching at I Love Quran. Mm-hmm. Tafi Center. Mm-hmm. Yes. And I didn't mention in the introduction that you are one of the developer of the yes. Quranic education. Yes, for the region. curriculum of that school. Yes. So you're looking forward to expand your career in that area. I mean, education is very important. Yes. And to start with the Quran is a wonderful way to shape the akhlaq of the people. Yes. For now, I have to be satisfied with uh, preschool <laughs> education. But my real concern is in uh, tertiary education, mm-hmm. especially postgraduate yeah. studies. Yes. Uh, so, uh, to the question, how do I contribute to the society? Uh, I think at my capacity in the education uh, area, of course. But if I could uh, d- dream, I would like a society where philosophers are being referred to uh, frequently. Definitely. Uh. When you mention philosophers, it reminds me of one very question that I asked you during our group work Mm -hmm. project Mm -hmm. we were waiting for the other come in so what are the three books that you think everyone should read if you have to choose Mm, the first one is of course the Quran no 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 (laughs) okay (laughs) Uh, the first book is I think uh, how to read a book how to read a book by Mortimer Adler yeah that is the book of all books all right. The book of books, uh, the key to the key to other books, to yes. difficult books, to great books, to mm-hmm. classics, and then uh, second one is Risalah Kaum Muslimin by Professor Said Muhammad Akib Alatas. Pr- Risalah Kaum Muslimin, or in English, a treatise to Muslims, uh, where in that book he discusses about the dilemmas and the predicaments that are encompassing the Muslim community nowadays. Uh, the confusion of knowledge, uh, the misplaced uh, authorities, and so on and so forth. And then uh, the third book, um, I'm not sure <laughs> about the third book, but perhaps... Uh, perhaps any book you're reading now? I'm currently reading Nisya Iliade okay. about comparative religion, but I, I, I would not recommend that book to us. <laughs> So basically, the first one would be how to read a book. Yes. And the second one is Salah. Salah Kaum Muslimin. Which is the book that opens you to the world of. Uh, to the world of yes, yeah, to to the world of my field. Yeah. Definitely. Thank you so much, Yusro, for your time. Yeah. And sharing and being open and raw about your intellectual journey. I think that's very important because that's what we celebrate here. Just to show people who we are, for mm-hmm. example, like you, mm-hmm. you identify confidently as a philosopher. So I hope that all of us benefit something from this. And definitely, in the future, do follow Yusra. Also, we'll add all his details in the <laughs> comment section, perhaps. And f- follow TV on our YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. And definitely, if you have any suggestions or comments, just shoot the question. I hope that you're enjoying this discussion. Uh, yes, of course. And Indeed. please, if in the future we invite some more, or if even you want to bring anyone ah. to this show, because yeah. our goal of this show is to dive into the minds of our very great people so that we can benefit from them, because how else do we unlock potentials except by exploring the secrets? Yes. So thank you for joining us. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.